So look, um, any questions from the floor? We have a microphone, which works. Any questions? This one over there. Uh, hi, Greg Fausen from University of New England. I uh, don't usually <laughs> ask questions, um, but I've got more of a comment. Uh, thanks for your um, uh, presentation, David. Um, I'm the award winner for um, the industry category for AWI this year, uh, making something called Electronic Shepherd. But the previous year... Can you um, hold the mic up? Sorry. No worries. Uh, I made a system that was on the Wild Dog National Action Day called Wild Dog Alert. Um, and in your presentation, you mentioned the idea of um, an alert system. I just wanted to point out for the audience that um, we actually made that with the Invasive Animal CRC last year. So there's an actual system that can do that. I just, uh, I, th I was hoping it'd be a po uh, yeah, positive, positive news for everyone. Hopefully <laughs> people can start using it soon. Bloody consultants. <laughs> I think you, you won the award last night. I think you were a recipient of a Science and Innovation Award. Yes, for AWA. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, just to, uh, just the, if there, are there any other questions? Yes. Uh, Mr. Peart, I think, uh, will go first. And did I, how many years have you been coming to ABARES Outlooks? You mentioned earlier. 44 years. I think that deserves a round of Bravo. applause anyway. <laughs> uh, a question to Jimmy Jackson. You were saying that Italy is now producing yarn cheaper or equivalent to China. Yeah. They've dropped, uh, they're only 25% of what they were eight, seven or eight years ago, so there must be a fair bit of residual industry still there, perhaps. Why isn't the industry swinging back to, say, the Italians with that uh, great capacity for quality and a great reputation as much as it might swing to Vietnam? I'd like to say, uh, first of all, we started work in the same year. I've been 44 years with AWI, so I don't know whether the same day, but anyhow. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's true. As I said, the, um, the Chinese yam prices have been catching up, particularly the last three or four years, catching up rapidly to the European prices, what Europeans left. And as I say, just this last few months, because of the US dollar, which China trades in, compared to the euro, it's just flipped the balance. Might, might flip back, but you know, there's, there's essentially no difference today. As, and the point I was trying to make, China's no longer cheap. Will the industry ever go back to uh, Italy in a big way? Unfortunately, it will, will not. Um, um, the reason is, is because um, if you look at early stage processing machinery for wool, like raw wool scouring and top making, it's very, very wool specific. That's all but disappeared out of Italy. And it's a big operation to put it back. To buy a new plant uh, costs around uh, 40 million US dollars, yeah? Most of the plant ended up in China or India or second hand. Uh, Italy, the last 10 years, became a graveyard for textile machinery and almost every day we get asked, um, you know, where can we find this second hand and this, that and the other? I think two or three inquiries this week from likes of India. So once that type of equipment moves, and then it's very difficult to get it back. Uh, when you look at spinning, spinning wool equipment is uh, semi-specific, yeah? You can spin acrylic on it, but you can't spin cotton, etc. So that's not quite as bad, but once again, largely all that's disappeared from Italy. Um, when it comes to knitting, knitting's easy. Knitting, you know, knitting machine's a knitting machine. Well, you can knit acrylic, you can knit wool, whatever, and they're relatively cheap. But un unfortunately, um, it definitely won't come back in, in a big way. Also, you've lost the skill. The skills disappeared, you know? Biela, I don't know if you've ever been to Biela, was the center of the real top textile industry in Italy. It's a dead town today. You know, half the shops are closed, it's sad, and this, that, and the other, and you know, people took early retirement and redundancies and didn't come back. So it's a very, very sad. Okay, we might... 
Yeah, we have got a, an employment, but at the end of the day, you know, it's up to somebody to re reinvest there. But well, the, the Jimmy, is there investment going into some of the newer European areas like Yugoslavia yeah. or Eastern Europe? Yes, there is. In uh, a lot, the, well, not a lot, but some of the uh, Italian, two big Italian groups actually moved to Bulgaria. Like I mentioned, it, unfortunately, the textile industry, manufacturing always followed the low cost countries. So Bulgaria and to a lesser extent Romania is the cheapest places in, in Europe at the moment but will they price themselves out eventually? Yeah. There is a move what's called reshoring, and it's happening in the United States. Textiles is starting to come back in the United States because of the Made in USA brand. And also this week I had a meeting with Burberry. Burberry's very interested, and I'm very happy that they've still got two factories in Yorkshire and they want to expand. <laughs> okay, look, I'll take one more question. Yeah. I think you've been waiting patiently. If you can introduce yourself. Hello, it's Anna Carr from ABES. Um, this is a question um, for both David and John. I'm interested, uh, John, you mentioned a lot about how significant your mentor through the MLA challenge had been. And, and David, I heard, I think I heard you say that there's a shortage of potential for you to have conversations with really bright, engaged people when you're living so far away. What is it that's going to have either or both of you contribute to mentoring as an independent successful producer when you're trying to make money on your own farm and how could we expand that across the industries? Um, yeah, yeah, I suppose for us it's um, a matter of meeting our own personal goals first and then I think once we, we tick them, which is, you know, we've really got to get our, our, our farm um, a viable, sustainable operation. But yeah, I've, I definitely want to give back to the industry and, and um, you know, it's a personal thing whether people want to or not. And I've, I've gotten so much out of the challenge, I want to give back, but I also like to spruik and help and all that sort of thing. So, um, but I think it's, yeah, we, we, we at home need to just make sure I can get ourselves right first. You know, I, I would sort of say that, particularly in Queensland, um, uh, the idea of using a consultant is a very spooky thing to you know, it's the land of last adoption sort of stuff. And so um, farm consultants um, are rare specimens up there and they generally, they generally, um, there's not too many organisations that have established themselves and are able to hold the line. It, it's, a real, it's a real challenge of chicken or the egg sort of thing. Of, um, but I guess the story of um, people that have used consultants and the changes they make and, and the, they go on with it, being told in the north, it's going to be a really important thing. It, it's... A, to get people to want to use consultants and to use advisors and to seek the right uh, mentors, because there's plenty of people out there give you advice, but a lot of it's pretty flawed. It, it, it's a long, it's a long, it's a long-term game, and uh, it's a long game. And and so you know for the you know for MLA and AWI and, and all those other agencies, um, a sophisticated think tank to think about how how you'll generate and drive that in the years to come. Because the returns will be low for a long time, um, as you as you build up an awareness of, of of the use of consultants, it takes a long time to get there. Where people will then get to a point where they're actually going to part with money, it's a big challenge. As a chairman's prerogative, am I allowed a small bit of advertising? We run a uh, leading sheep network, a grower network, education network in in Queensland. Emily King is the manager sitting here in the front row. Just put your hand up, Emily. Em runs our national sheep extension networks. And we run them in six states. And it's interesting, I know that Noel, I think Nola Dempsey is one of the coordinators. There's a lot of webinars, and because of the distances, the emphasis on sort of remote communication is so critical. But, it, and it's, a, but it's a serious challenge. So look, I'd like to draw the session to a close. Thank you all for your participation. I hope you really enjoyed it. There were some fascinating perspectives. Some thanks, I'd like to thank very much Carolyn for her, your effort again in organising this. You do a wonderful job. I'd like to thank the two major sponsors, so ABEARS, um, but also uh, the Wool Growers of Australia through AWI. We love this relationship and we think it's a very, very good session. So thank you, I hope you enjoyed it.